I'm here at 2019's Denver Pop Culture Con, and I am here with the lovely Christina Blanche. So yay! We are at the tail end of the convention, as you'll probably see in the background. People are going to be dismantling soon. But we are here to talk about your awesome works. And I know um, right in front of us, I'm just going to steal these real quick, we have Towels from the Crypts. So tell me a little bit about your opportunity to work on an iconic franchise that deals with horror, thriller, suspense, debauchery, yes. everything. It's crazy. Um, I can't even believe that I, I, I got to do this because I, I grew up, you know, sneaking, reading Tales from the Crypt, and my mom's like, I know you're reading it. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, she was great. You put Monty Python and everything. Oh, um, oh yeah. Things I totally should have been watching. But I, <laughs> I know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, um, I, I submitted, I admit, um, Jim Salicrop, um, mm -hmm. his assistant editor, uh, actually introduced me to him at New York Comic Con one year. And I showed him Charlie Wormwood and he liked it. And he said, send me some pigeons. And I was like, I can send you some pigeons. So I did. And at first they were like, but he, he sent back, I sent in two, mm -hmm. and he sent back, he goes, oh, I'm not quite sure it's going to And I was like, oh, okay, I'll send some more. And then he went, oh, wrong one. <laughs> oh, yours are good. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, yes. He's like, yeah, all the scripts. So um, I did the first one, Undertow, and loved it. It was inspired by my daughter not cleaning her room. Oh, um, that's a great <laughs> way. Yes. <laughs> other one, I'm not even sure whether or not where it came from. It's just, it's very dark, but it's great. I love it. Um, it's my favorite of the two stories, actually. Um, and so it has available on the trade. And I, I had just loved it, loved it, loved it. And I would do more. If they want me to do more, I'll do it in a heartbeat. I love it. I have several stories. Just Add Water is one that I cannot wait to write. Oh, that's the title. Just makes you think of, um, is it going to be related to food? Is it going to be related to science or... And that's the great thing about Tales from the Crypt is if you haven't if you haven't read the comics and you've just seen the classic television show or even the cartoon series that they oh, had yeah. in the 90s, there's so much that can go into it. Oh, yeah. And I love that it's still alive as a comic. It's alive. It's ever and what's great about the stories is they're evergreen. Yes. You can, I mean, I don't have to say, oh, well, you need this issue, issue three. You can just pick it up and read, you know, the stories. Well, yeah, they're just they're good forever. Well, they're great snapshots yes. of a universe that just needs to still be there. Absolutely. And you have another comic book series, just to steal it real quick. Oh, yes. Yep. The, Here's this one, too. Oh, perfect. The new cover. So, Damnation of Charlie Wormwood. And I know we were talking about this a lot yesterday, because this actually takes place in a prison. It takes place in prison. Um, I taught in prison for about a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, my friend Chris Carr did also. And so after the program ended, we would get together and have coffee, and, and I was thinking about writing a comic, and he was like, you know, we have a lot of stories, let's do a, we should write a book. And I go, let's write a comic. And he was like, sure. So we got together, came up with this idea, and we were, you know, we both wrote the scripts, and then he got busy with, you know, a job. Sure. Um, and I just, on the comic shop, so I had, you know, <laughs> no work at all. I just started reading comics all day. Hey, so, you know what? That's not a bad thing. People no. think that. I yeah. never, I don't think I've ever read, read a comic at my shop. Um, but uh, Source Point Press came to me and they asked if they could put it out. It started out on Thrillman as a webcomic um, and then it, it proceeded to, to take off. And so now it's coming out in June from Source Point Press, which is one of my, it's, it's they're a wonderful press. They do also do things. Uh, Dead End Kids is coming out in July from Frank Vogel, who is just here. Um, it's it's crazy good, um, but Charlie, um, I don't know. I'm better at selling other people's things. Well, no, I think it's fantastic because, as we talked about yesterday, it's a different sort of narrative. It's yeah. not your superhero story. No. It's taking in this visceral experience of a person who is going in to help others who are in prison for various things various things that they've committed and we had talked about this yesterday because i worked for a second chance facility helping to get people jobs after they came out of prison and so this personally hits home to me because you have to watch people as that innocent person helping the guilty yes. figure out what they have to do and and so in the book charlie is a teacher <laughs> in prison 
is a sick kid. Um, he finds that one of his students comes in and has a, an offer where he can make some extra money. So it's you know it's, yes. it's like it's it's like his road down that path. Kind of like Shawshank Redemption. Yes. It's, he justifies some of the decisions he makes, you know, and we can all justify everything. Well, if it, if in a desperate yes. situation. Yes. But um, the art is phenomenal. Oh wow! I like how it's by Chi, and it's I, I don't even want to say black and white because it's it's just too beautiful. Um, but then all of the flashbacks that the, that the students tell their stories they're done in this this black and white line art. Oh um, wow! So it's a different art style. Same same Chi. Mm -hmm. he's, he's incredible. I used to cry when he's Oh my god, it's so pretty. Um, but all of these are stories that um, the students would tell us. Or he would overhear. Oh, yes. And so we incorporated in there, so they're many of them are cleaned up a little bit because well for audiences. And when you read it, you're going to go, "That's cleaned up." Um, <laughs> but um, it's it's I think it's fantastic. Um, the, you know, Chris and I worked really hard on it. Um, the cheese art is phenomenal. Source point. A big shout out to Josh who has been frantically putting it all together and did all the lettering that was left off. And he's like. <laughs> He's like, I love and hate this book. And I'm like, at the end, I hope you love it. He's like, I will. It's just been a process. Well, it takes a village to create anything. Um, well, and that, that's the great thing about comics, is that it really is this collaborative process. Sometimes it's frustrating, but it's collaborative, and so everybody has a part of it, and I think it just makes it work stronger. Well, it really does, and for any type of comic book, no matter what you're reading, be it comedy, be it horror, or even this film noirish, as the damnation is, it's nice that you have so many hands in the cookie jar, but they're all with a purpose. They're oh, yeah. not just trying to deviate from the strength of the work. Exactly. And that's what I think is the beauty of this. And look at this beautiful new cover from Francesco Francavilla. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe he did this. It's so beautiful, and I love it, and I want it tattooed on me. <laughs> You this never know. Happen. That may happen at some point. <laughs> so I think we're actually coming close to the end of the con. We'll still continue, but there's a lot of noise right now. I think. Now, what inspired you to do comic books in general? Um, well, I'm, I'm an educator, so I have my doctor of education. I teach using comics. Sure. But I was doing a lot of um, reading a lot of comics critique by by comic scholars. Uh huh. And saying, you know, the size of the panel means this, or this means that. And it got me thinking, I, like I'm going to have a hard time yeah. critiquing something when I don't know the process that went into it. Very true. So I decided in order for me to do that, I need to write one. So it, it started as an experiment, and I found out I really dig it. So we just kept on, and then I got more opportunity to do Tales of the Crypt for all your comics, I did Monster Dojo for Action Lab. Um, my first prose. Oh, so wow! In a, a cafe macabre. It's, a, it's an anthology um, by all women. Um, and then there's special art by women, and um, it's going to be put up by. It was a Kickstarter that got funded, uh -huh. and then Source Point Press also picked it up, so that'll be out there. Wow, they're so, definitely in it to win it with uh, what they can. Source Point has been great, and like I said, there's, you know, sorry, there's so much good work coming from there. I just, I love it. They've been so great. Now, do you think being a, not a former educator, because you've never put that term in front of it, yes. it seems like you still I educate, still teach, yeah. has that helped you in your story writing to understand the different audiences of who you connect with and how to put those together? And, and no, also, my, I have a um, degree in anthropology, so that helps too. Oh, I wow. I can read different you know, audiences. Um, there's a lot of archaeologist in my story because it's, I have my degree in that my um, uh, master's is in it. Oh, so, wow. Um, so, yeah, so I, I, I take all of my life experiences and, and put them in the books. Being an educator really helps you to, you can read audiences. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you know, I know what audiences. I don't holler people to come over because I can read people go to that person really isn't interested in this. Absolutely. Like, you know, so I'm not going to bother them. Well, you want to connect with people, and you want to make it where it's an authentic experience. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. And I want people to go, yes, I can understand why he did that, because mm -hmm. of this. 
not that I would have made the same decisions he made. In fact, you know, Chris and I were asked all the time to see stuff in, and I'm like, do I want to give up my family and my job, possible jail time, for, you know, 20 bucks worth of cigarettes? I think I'm going to pass. Well, you exactly. Know. You have to, and it's a great way to kind of demonstrate in a visceral experience, or vicarious, I mean, about what a person does that, like you said, you may never do this yeah. in the, your wildest dreams, but you have to respect a person's desperation. Yes, yes. and if you, you know, I think that was what we all do in the situation. That Absolutely. Was in. And, you know, and you feel for some of the prisoners, because I, I did, you know, it's like, you oh, don't have the same opportunities I did growing up. So, you know, I came so much in prison. It was a much bigger education for me teaching in there than I ever did. Well, I have to admit, at the same time, in my experience, helping people look for jobs, because I had to know what they did, I had to understand what type of environment based on what they've yes. done that I could put them into, because I didn't want to put them in a situation where they eventually either go back or feel uncomfortable or feel judged. Exactly. And I think that's the hardest part, and this is why I love the pros, and I'm so excited for it, because having worked with so many individuals who made mistakes, you feel, even though they've done their time, they've done a crime, they have to take their punishment, but once they've taken their punishment and they go out to the world, they're still punished. <laughs> they're still punished. They are not given that chance to demonstrate that they've learned from this experience. So I thank you very much for this. And I really thank you for the opportunity to chat with you today well, thank as well. You. And you can get this at your local comic shop. It's coming out in June. Damnation of Charlie Warfield from Source Point Press. Absolutely. And if anybody, um, to, for anyone who would like to follow you or learn a little bit more about what you have in the pipeline or just in general, how can they follow you on social media? Um, I'm at, at Christy Blanche on both Twitter and Instagram. I think it's Christina Blanche on Facebook. And then um, I'm working on my website right now, ChristinaBlanche.com. Um, so hopefully that'll be up soon. I'm trying to get that going. And I'm just like, oh, uh, uh, it's work. It's so much work. I do trying to get website. all this other stuff. And so I've got my friend Cinnamon that's going to help me do that. So she's like, let me, let me help. And, um, I have to say, your friends have the best names in the world. They have the best names. I'm sorry. I'm thinking, like, I'm trying to personify how she looks or how Cinnamon looks. I don't know if I give them credit for justice. No, it's, it's, <laughs> she's, she's amazing. So I have the one, I have the best friends, and two, I think they're the greatest names. Absolutely. So. Well, thank you very much for thank the opportunity. You so much. It was my pleasure. And everyone, have a great rest of your day. And yes. if you've been at the con, have a wonderful end of it. Bye. Bye. Thank you.